Shadow Legends, welcome to the video. Glad to have you all here with me today. We've got another champion guide on the way, this time on the newly buffed mythical champion, Mezumel Looperfang. Mezumel, I thought that meant something other than just her name. I thought Mezumel was like an ancient beast, but I couldn't find anything on it. Uh, but I don't know, it, it kind of it kind of rang a bell for me when she was introduced to the game. Either way, she's a Skinwalker mythical champion. She just received a pretty dang substantial buff. I want to say every single one of of her damage dealing abilities got a damage multiplier increase that is substantial they also added ignore defense to her kit so a champion that honestly pre-buff i didn't think she was as bad as most people thought she was she certainly wasn't you know the number one mythical far from it in the game she was on the lower half but i th i thought that she still be great in wave content uh great for progression which is not really what you want from a mythical champion and then had some niche use case in end game arena right she was a threat that had to be dealt with inside the arena i'm top 500 live arena right now and i saw her or i see her from time to time you know she's definitely not a meta arena champion but you know every now and again especially if you go with like a Sun Wukong or somebody, you know, or a lot of revivers with the deny revive ability. Uh, she was already kind of a threat that had to be dealt with. I've actually banned Mezumel pre-buff before because who wants to deal with a block revive who hits really hard and ignores stone skin, right? Anyway, uh, well, actually, she didn't hit very hard. That was the problem, right? Unless you have God tier gear, fully ascended, fully awakened, whatever, you know. Uh, let's take a look at her kit, guys. And, and really quickly here on the buff. It was damage inc increased to her A1, damage increased multiplier to her A2, and added ignore defense. It's very, very powerful. Even 15% ignore defense is dramatic. It's, it's big. It's big, right? Uh, and then alternate form, damage multiplier on the A1, which is an AoE, and damage multiplier increase on the A2, which again is an AoE attack. So they just buffed everything about this champion. Moonclaw with a decreased defense on two turns on her A1 ability. On her A2 base form, she's hitting two times, which is really nice. She has a ignores 15% target's defense, ignores stone skin, ignores strengthen, ally protect, and shields. So a lot, ignore basically everything. Place a block revive on the target if they are killed, which is great. And that's on a, a three turn cooldown. I like that as a double hitter, it can get you, you know, kill Sun Wukong, block revival, even if they have a UDK on the team, right? On the A3 ability, this is an extra turn self-buffing ability. She brings increased crit rate, increased crit damage, and increased attack. This gives you, especially in the arena, it's a three turn duration, this gives you in the arena the, the ability to build her with 70% crit rate because she's always going to be up to 100 for her first you know few turns, obviously. You do take the extra turns, so keep that in mind as well. Lasting Gifts, not a bad mastery to have on this champion if you do decide to build her with less than 100% crit rate. For PvE, for wave content, Doom Tower, Centronos, I'd probably just try to build her with 100% crit rate anyway. Uh, on her passive, Relentless Hunt. Heals the champion by 20% of their uh, damage inflicted, which is nice, kind of built-in little lifesteal mechanic. Plays a revive on death on this champion for two turns every time they kill an enemy, which is also very nice. She brings crit rate in all battles by 27%, so I guess feasibly... You could build her with a 48% crit rate, and uh, you'd be pretty good. Actually, less than that. Uh, 40. Quick math here. We got 30, 55, so 45% crit rate if you wanted to use her as an aura lead. Wow. Uh, yeah, I would not recommend that, but you could. You could if you wanted to. Uh, on her alternate, we already talked about what was buffed there. On her alternate form, she looks like, well, this. She's quite the beast. So I didn't mention her stats, guys, but they're the same on the main form and on the alternate form, okay? Uh, so she has a 1652 attack. Not bad. Not what you want to see out of a mythical, but still not a solid, right? She's an AoE on the A1. The Spirit of the Pack is an AoE that does not trigger counterattacks. Very useful when going against a Taurus and Marichka, for example. Places an extra hit on enemies under True Fear, which she has on her A2 ability. This is an AoE again on a three-turn cooldown when booked. Now, personally, I don't have her alternate form booked, but I do have her base form booked. Attacks all enemies two times, places a true fear for not one, but two turns. A two turn uh, true fear on a three turn cooldown is really, really good. This attack will not trigger counterattacks. Again, will also ignore unkillable and block damage buffs, which is really nice against Alas. She has the, uh, the affinity uh, uh, lead as well, uh, going spirit against uh, force. 
also very good against uh, like a Helicath, for example. Uh, anybody who's going to be putting block damage on the enemy team. All right, we have Embrace the Beast. Increases champions attack and crit damage by 20% while in their alternate form. So now we do have a damage boost on the alternate form with all the AoEs. So that is the kit. We talked about the buff already. Let's go ahead and show you how I have her built in today's video. And then we want to do kind of a damage test on her alternate form before we jump into the arena and test out her main form. Man, this is the first day at the time of this recording of having four columns now. It's a little bit to get used to, isn't it? I'm sure in a week I'll forget it was ever, you know, different, but it's a, it's a little weird to me. Anyway, I digress. So where are you? There you are. So we have her in savage gear and we have her in a four piece stone skin, right? This would be the ideal way for the end game to build Mezumel for the arena specifically, but of course we can use it in PVE content as well. So I get a, a turn of stone skin, I get the ignore 25% enemy defense. If you don't have four piece stone skin, no worries. I would probably just go savage and cruel or lethal and cruel. Really getting that extra ignore defense will make a big, big impact on Mezumel Luperfang. Uh, so total stats here we have in today's build, 7,900 on the attack, 216. On the speed, 76 and 317, because we're gonna take advantage of our self-buffing increased crit rate ability. And then we have 264 on the accuracy. We are a little light on the accuracy if we wanted to uh, take advantage of the true fear on the uh, base form. She also has that decreased defense to keep in mind on the base form. Did I say base? Alternate. Uh, decreased defense on the on the base, <laughs> true fear on the alternate. There we go, Ash. So you can see the gear that I have on her. Pretty good gear, pretty good gear. Uh, went for a lot of speed, as you guys can see, a trip speed here, a trip speed there with the uh, the mythical stat too. Uh, but I did that so I could get attack percentage, attack percentage, and get another attack percentage, attack percentage on the boots. So we looked for as much speed as we could on the substats. That way we can mitigate the fact that I have 80% attack uh, with no speed on the boots. Not ideal. Ideally, we'd like to see some speed as a substat here, but still pretty dang, uh, you know, end game build. Crit damage with crit damage as well on the gauntlets. Uh, on the banner, we have, I'm sure, attack. Yes. Attack with some accuracy that I can get a little bit extra, which will be helpful. Uh, then we have crit damage. I ran out of freaking chaos. <laughs> I need to go farm a little bit here. Uh, I, that would ideally be crit damage with crit damage, not flat attack on the uh, the amulet. And then I have attack with attack on the ring. Uh, masteries. We have a very typical arena nuker build here, guys, in terms of the masteries. That's where I'm going to be using uh, Mezumel mainly in the arena on my account. So we have Ruthless Ambush. That first hit is going to be uh, great because it's hopefully going to be blocking their revive. Uh, we also have uh, uh, a Helm Smasher as a tier 6 option. I didn't need the extra crit rate because of her. she brings her own uh, crit rate buff, so I went with Attack on Blade uh, Disciple instead of the Deadly Precision. I also went down on the support tree and picked up a little bit of extra accuracy. I will say, guys, a couple other options for masteries that I don't see here. We already talked about it, but lasting gifts can be very beneficial to extend the duration potentially of those buffs on our A3 ability, especially if you're counting on them to, to self-buffer. Uh, and then we can go defense tree as well. If we go defense tree, I would definitely go down with retribution. And if you're using her in PvE, definitely pick up Harvest Despair. Harvest Despair is going to be placing a leech along with the True Fear. It's a 60% chance of placing, so that will really help keep the entire team healed up, not just Mezumel. It's a great mastery for her alternate form, which again, I'm not going to be relying on heavily on my account, uh, but if I was, I would definitely pick that up. All right, so that is the build. We talked about some alternate uh, alternate uh, options for you guys as well. I do want to go ahead and start out in Doom Tower. I'm going to go all the way to the top. Floor 119 hard. I have her with these. Is this a nice free-to-play friendly team, guys, you think? You think here? Uh, I wanted to do kind of a DPS check against other mythical champions. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So I have a debuffer here in Venus who will go first to add the decreased defense and the weaken. And then I'm just going to test out, you know, Toshiro, Alaz, uh, uh, Siegfried. I don't expect her to beat Siegfried, but uh, let's just start out with a little... Uh, a1 cycling here. I have uh, Lazarius in there for the increased attack on everybody. Let's test out Siegfried's A2 ability. Actually, my bad. My bad, guys. I screwed up the damn run. I didn't have Venus in there at all. Alas, you're out. Venus, you're in. My bad. I was just doing it right before the video, but I must have not completed the run with it. Okay, we're good. We're good. So I do want to test out Siegfried first. We're just going to go in the order of their speeds, obviously, right? 
Now, Siegfried, his A2 hits very hard, but his A3 is the real creme de la creme in terms of damage, right, in the entire game. So we'll test out both of them here. Let's start out with the A2 first. We're looking at around 70 to 100K damage. 70 to 100K, not too bad, right? We'll just replay it and go pretty fast here. Let's try out that A3. I don't think anything in this entire game hits harder than the A3 of Siegfried. And that's not hyperbole. That's I think that's fact. <laughs> so I expect to kill everybody in a second. So here we go. Boom and boom. Yeah, a million damage. I mean, nothing's going to compete with that at all. It's insane. That was one of the biggest buffs of all time uh, to Siegfried. So yeah, nothing's going to compete with the A3 or A2, excuse me. Or excuse me, the A3. But the A2, uh, we might be able to beat that. Let's see. So Siegfried, you're done, man. Show off. Well, this A1 on Solus here. Let's try Toshiro's Bloody Typhoon ability here, okay? Uh, place an extra hit on enemies on, under two or more debuffs. That's going to be everybody. Oof. He didn't even have to double hit. He was hitting for like 120-ish K, and he didn't even have to go in with a double hit. So that was pretty strong. I mean, nothing compared to Siegfried, but it was pretty strong. All right, let's go in again. Get those debuffs down. Get the increased attack on everybody. Let's pass the baton here to Siegfried. Then to Toshiro. Don't, don't kill Solus. Now let's go to after, after Iron Brago instead. All right. Mezumel, you're up. All right. So we're going to switch forms here. And by the way, everybody is in very similar gear. Like these are my best. I should have mentioned this at the top. Uh, Siegfried, Toshiro, and Mezumel are probably my three best builds in terms of damage dealers. Their stats are very similar here. Uh, and they're all in a Savage or a Lethal set on top of, or Merciless. Not yeah, only Toshiro's in Merciless, uh, but either way, they're all stacked, right? So let's try the A2 first. What do we have here? 157k times two. So hit harder than Toshiro's A2, considering, did you see the extra hit there? It's nice to have that two turn true fear as well. Although, why is it only one turn? It's kind of weird, huh? I want to, uh, that's weird. I want to replay one more time. I want to try out her A1 ability too. So let's do that. Then we'll go into the arena, mess around a little bit. The thing about this champion is what's going to limit her, in my opinion, is simply the fact that outside of like, you know, I mean, we talked about her use cases, right? Wave content is where she's going to shine with the CCs, with the damage, AoEs for days. And then on the base form, it's going to be arena, PvP focused for the most part, right? So she's not the most versatile uh, mythical in the game, right? I do think she'll be meta now in the arena, in live arena at the very top. I do think that. But it's hard to say that she's like one of the best mythicals that you really want to pull anyway. But just because, you know, I guess you could use her in Hydra for sure on that alternate form. Should probably run a little quick little test there too, right? So wait a second. True fear for two turns, but it only went for one turn on Genzin. Hey, that A1 hit for almost the same there. That was pretty that was pretty impressive. Let's try her out really quickly here in the arena, guys, and then we'll go to uh We'll just test her out real quick on that A2 ability against Hydra Clan Boss, because my gut is, it says that she could actually be really formidable. Uh, and Hydra Clan Boss. Okay, so we're not super high in the arena, but we'll pick uh, good teams here, right? And I have a nice free-to-play friendly team again for you guys, but hey, it's a mythical spotlight. We're going to run mythical champions, right? Uh, really, she doesn't even need an increased attack setup, so you could really get a little bit unorthodox with the team that you build around her. Normally, with our nukers, obviously, we want the increased attack uh, at a bare minimum, but with Mezumel, she's going to bring her own buffs because she has an extra turn, so you don't really need to sweat it that much. All right, here we go. Uh, we'll come in here and lock them out. Hopefully remove that stone skin. No dice, but let's go in here and get a heal. And then is it Mezumel? Let's get in there and just in case he takes a turn before her. Nope. Okay. 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 Those are our counterattacks on the A1 ability. Man, Crixia lapped her. Golly. Golly, let's get a turn meter boost in here. All right, so let's go right where we should go, right? Hey, wait, 
Her self-buffing ability was put on cooldown. <laughs> All right, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. What we can do with the A2 without an increased attack against Stone Skin against a Magic Affinity matchup. Boom! We kits. Eh, what are you going to do? We tried. We tried. That was not the ideal first showcase for her against a Magic Affinity we kit. Can't do anything about that. Don't hold it against her. But we still looked like we did some pretty nice damage there, right? Uh, let's go in with a big nuke. Getting sick of this team. Lazarius, get out of here, buddy. Get out of here. Let's try again. Let's try, try, try one more arena battle here, guys. Let me know. I'm assuming many of you are probably watching this either out of curiosity or because you have her. Uh, let me know what you think of the buff. Let's just go against this team. It's not the hardest team in the... No, screw that. Let's go against this team. A little bit tankier. But what I kind of wanted... Hopefully somebody's under stone skin here. Just having a threat like Mezumel that can block Revive and ignore Stone Skin. That's the magic of Mezumel, right? She just never dealt damage before, so she wasn't used that often. Again, unless you had, like, insane gear to put on her. Uh, okay, here we go. Now we're cooking. Let's get in there. Let's provoke. I should have provoked uh, Siffy, but she has her skills on cooldown anyway. All right, here we go. So there's no, nothing to really worry about here. We're going to take that extra turn. We're going to try to, like, normally I would go after Siffy here, but there's no real need because we're going to block Revive anyway, and she has her skills on cooldown. So instead, I'm going to deal with the biggest threat, which is Turvold. So a nice, easy block Revive, 133k. I mean, beautiful. This is pretty much over. I mean, Solus can do a little bit of damage, so we'll deal with him. Let's just keep playing this out. Well, actually, <laughs> Alaz is like, nope, I will finish the group with an AoE. I kind of like pairing her with an AoE nuker in addition to the single target because it's nice after you deal with the most immediate threat, either under stone skin or whatever, it's really nice to have a uh, an AoE to kind of clean up, right? Let's do one more here, guys. But uh, I'll definitely be using her. I'll definitely be picking her a lot uh, inside the arena. It's just very tough. If you can pair her with the Shuzen that we just saw in that last battle, and they can hand it to Mez she can hand it to Mezumel and grant an extra turn to start out a fight, there's not much stopping her, right? Like, that pairing is very, very strong. You can build her super slow, and it doesn't matter. All right, Alas, we will... Uh, let's go Yameko here. And then let's, let's go after Narciss. I love that you don't, it's just so nice. It's been a while since I've ran like a, a Nithwi Blood Twin or somebody like that. But like Narciss right here. I mean, this whole team is hinged on Narciss getting a turn. That's the entire team. That's why he's in the stone skin. And then that's why they have the double reviver to pick him back up in the in the reset in the uh, the Yameko. But I can end everything now with a block revive on the stone skin. This this battle's over, you know. And that's the beauty of Mezumel, right? And again, the rest of the champions. I apologize for using like all mythicals in the video, guys. But truth of the matter is, it's uh it's it's kind of irrelevant. Like it just it's Mezumel. It's like she needs a turn. And she can decapitate their nuker even if they have three freaking revivers next to her, right? Uh, so, guys, I'm going to do, like, uh, I don't know. What am I going to Doom Tower? I'm going to give you, like, a... I'm going to let a Hydra team run with her. And I'm going to come back to you guys when it's over. And I'll show you the, the total damage. I'm going to run it on auto, though, so I'm not going to keep the result. So, I'll be right back. All right, guys. So, I didn't run it for that long, a.k.a. I died and I had it on auto during a work meeting. But... Uh, the damage is pretty dang impressive, I will say. 31 million compared to 44 on Turvold. Turvold is plus four, fully awakened. Uh, he's a beast. And then, uh, you know, so in between a Venus and a Turvold, I think that's pretty solid. You know, I think it's pretty solid. I tried running her, I remember, back in the day. And I know the results. I, it's hard for me to say exactly what they were because it's when I pulled her a few months ago. But I will say that there were nothing at all in the stratosphere of where they are right now in this build. So I think that absolutely most players, at least on one of your Hydra teams, could use her, especially on an ally attack team, in her alternate form. So Lady Makage, who's on the team as well here, I'm covering her up, but she's a great pairing uh, for Mezumel. Sure, she's not going to be a... 
uh, Shadowkin to join on the A1, but just that ally attacker, any ally attacker for that matter, is going to synergize very, very well with that hard-hitting AoE on the A1 of her alternate form, which I did keep her in the entire battle here. She was in alt form the entirety of this 17-minute uh, Hydra run. So guys, there it is. Thank you much, so much for watching until the end. Keep the champion guide request coming in the comments below. Much love, and as always, take care, guys.